Okay. All right, welcome everyone. Just looking for the cue on the video. Okay. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, today is Tuesday, August 28, 2018. This is a special meeting uh, for our Harbor Advisory Board and uh, Visit SloCal Board of Directors. This is an advisory board interview uh, special meeting. Uh, for the record, um, we have um, Council Member Heading, who's on excused absent, but we do have a quorum, so we'll call the meeting to order. And um, so, just real quick, Dana, um, we'll go through public comment in a minute, but just as far as um, order, we can call up our advisory board members. Do you want to explain anything about um, the seats and um, the um, qualifications and things like that for us? Sure. Thank you, um, Mayor. Um, Dana Swanson, City Clerk. Um, this meeting is to fill current vacancies on uh, the Harbor Advisory Board. There are two vacancies currently, one for a member at large with a term ending January 31st, 2021, and the other is for a waterfront leaseholder. That would be a leaseholder in the Tidelands Trust lands area that the city manages. And that term ends January 31st, 2019. Um, when the um, agenda was posted, there were four applicants for the member at large. One has withdrawn. Ms. Mr. Wahlberg submitted his withdrawal yesterday. And um, Mr. Creamer is unable to attend, but is hopeful the council will consider his application in his absence. Um, that is an action that the council would need to make a motion to consider his application based on city policy. After that, we will consider the applicant for uh, the city's representative to the Slow County Visit um, Tourism Board. And um, we have one applicant for that position. Um, and could you explain a little bit of the application process and the window where it, mm -hmm. um, it closed as far as policy for us and why we're going through what we're going and maybe the question that council needs to ask for that as well? Currently, uh-huh. The... Um, the vacancies were noticed on July 9th, and the application period extended to August 10th. During that time, we did receive applications for the Harbor Advisory Board, but we did not receive any applications for the Slow County Tourism Board. Um, shortly after the close of the application period, Mr. Patel submitted a letter of interest, and based on the challenges recruiting hoteliers or finding hoteliers who are able to serve, staff would recommend that the council consider that application. Okay. So um, I think we'll go through public comment and then we'll address the question on um, just as process goes as far as um, going through the, the formal mm -hmm. process of the visits locale, even though the um, mm -hmm. application period um, has closed. And I think that's just a, a small formality that we should at least verbalize mm -hmm. and, and agree to. And if I get ahead of myself, please remind me. Okay. Um, so with that, we'll open up public comment for items on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll close public comment and bring it back to council. Thank you. So uh, maybe before we ask our applicants up, just I guess the question is, we had an application period that closed, mm -hmm. and it would be up to council, per our policy and procedure, to go ahead and proceed with this interview process. I know it seems a little bit clunky, but it, it's a, a minor formality. I certainly would want to support it, and I'm just looking for e either a motion or a nod of consensus that we can move forward. I move we move forward with the application. Second. We have a motion by Ms. McPherson, second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5-0. Thanks. Uh, light formality there, but thanks very much, um, folks, folks, for letting us entertain and sticking to the 4-0. Uh, Thank you. I said 5-0, but um, uh, that would be actually a 4 zero one with the abstention of uh, council member heading not being um, attending. Okay, so with that, we can, uh, we'll open it up for our Harbor Advisory Boards, and if uh, council is interested in anything different, we can invite all the applicants open, over up and uh, interview all, both the at-large and the um, waterfront leaseholders. Is there agreement to, to that, format, that, that format? Mayor, may I ask Pretty? one question? Yes. Um, did that motion include consideration of Mr. Kramer's um, application in his absence, or was that simply related to the Tourism Board? I just um, want to be that, sure I'm that clear. That was specifically to the okay. um, 
uh, TBID board, okay. but you bring up a good question. So uh, and that, at that point, we, we should probably confirm if we want to consider Mr. Kramer at that point, and maybe you can elaborate um, uh, any formalized letter or email on that. Uh, yes, Mr. Kramer did call yesterday. Um, he is um, he is working in Santa Catalina Island. Did mm -hmm. I get that right? And unable to attend today's interviews, he did um, formally request that the council consider his application, and he submitted a resume by email today that the council can consider. It does require a motion and action by the council in order to do that. Okay. All right. So that would be the discussion prior to getting to the interview. Mm -hmm. Sorry, folks, this is, we're, we're busy here today. Um, would there be a motion to, to consider Mr. Uh, Kramer or um, any other motion? Yes, so moved. So moved. So we have a motion to consider Mr. Kramer um, in his absence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a motion and a second. A motion by Mr. Makowetsky, second by Mr. Davis. Any <coughs> further discussion? I would just point out that we don't have a resume. Did you suggest that there was one submitted late? It was submitted late, well, early afternoon, and published as agenda correspondence. So I it was see. it was very late in the process. Okay. Okay. Any any comments? Um, well, I'm reluctant to consider it without having looked at um, the at the bio and itself and giving getting some idea of who this person is. So that's kind of the way I feel about it. Okay. Um, I, I would agree at this point, but if, if that's where we are, then we'll just go ahead and call, call for the vote and then go from there. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. No. So we have um, a one... Uh, three, zero, one, Mr. Makowetsky, three, Mr. Davis, Mr. Irons, and Ms. McPherson, and the absent, Mr. Heading. Sorry, I'm trying to mm -hmm. get through all these. Thanks. Thanks. And um, so I think we've got everything. Is that right? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much for keeping us on task through all these things. And um, so with that, we'll invite up our um, Harbor Advisory Board applicants. So that's uh, Mr. Blackford, Mr. Bliss, Mr. Fowler, and Ms. Hansen. If you could all come up. We have a seat at the table. The folks in the back will probably share a mic back there. So if uh, two could take the two seats here and two can share a mic in the back. All right. Thanks for everybody's patience and allowing us to, to get through some of the formalities. Um, welcome. Uh, thanks for applying for these advisory board um, positions. Um, it's, it's always been very important and, um, and beneficial for the city. Um, I was just going to ask that you do an introduction, and then all of us will go through one round of questions. If there's a follow-up question, we might, you know, might someone might just, hey, I just want to follow up on a particular question. Um, just ask you to relax. And there's a button on the front here, and you'll see a green LED come on. Just make sure you hit that, and the LED comes on. And if we don't hear you, we might um, ask you to speak into the microphone. And um, with that, I'm just going to ask uh, ask you to introduce, and I'll start with you at the, at the very front, and then if you can just go ahead and do an introduction, and then we'll just go around the table, and then we'll start off with questions. My name is Mark Blackford. I'm a boat owner and a, a uh, dock patron in the, in the harbor here. I spent approximately three to four weekends per month here in the harbor. I have a distinct interest in the outcomes of the harbor and uh, long-range planning <coughs> history and uh, you want to try that one more time just to do a mic check on there? I, I heard you very well. Mic check. Okay, all right, we're good. All right. And I know as everybody turns, we kind of go away from the mic, but our friends in the back are helping us with that. Thanks very much for the inter introduction. Sir? We may have to share Okay, all right. My name is Robert Bliss. Thank you. I'm a three-year resident of Morrow Bay. I'm a retired college professor. Uh, I've served on advisory committees down in Orange County for the Transit Authority and the Water District of El Toro. And I formed an advisory committee at Saddleback College when I was a professor there for computer training, as they did not have a program 
when I joined, and I established it that way. Uh, I guess I'm kind of a perpetual volunteer. Uh, I was a volunteer policeman in Los Angeles County when I was in my 20s, and I've been a vo sheriff's volunteer in Orange County and Shasta County in the 10 years after I retired. Uh, I'd like very much to serve on your advisory committee. I think I could do you some good. Thank you. Sharice? Hello, my name is Sharice Hansen. I have Under the Sea Gallery and Mermaid Boutique on the Embarcadero for, since 1999. Uh, I've lived on my boat in the harbor as well as want to be a future boat owner in the harbor. I have three children who are growing up here in Morro Bay um, and we constantly are doing fun activities on the waterfront. Um, I also have the um, Building um, for at 833 Embarcadero, which will, uh, which we are now the master lease holders for of TLC Family Industries, and we are going to build a new building with eight hotel rooms, boutique hotel rooms up on top, and the docks are going to um, be redeveloped as well as the bottom floor retail and restaurant and play area. So I would like, like to be a part of it, not just because of my family's position and community, me wanting to be a positive community member, but also as a business owner and also as somebody who enjoys the water and coming from the background of Humboldt State University and Cal Poly Tech as um, a teacher of marine biology and um, minoring in environmental ethics. I really want to be a part of, of some of the choices that the Harbor Advisory gets to um, propose and to think about and give you guys guidance for. Thanks, Sharice. My name is Bob Fowler. Um, I've been a, a leaseholder in uh, Morro Bay since uh, 2012. I've uh, just uh, completed uh, two phases of uh, docks. Mark's one of my, one of my uh, boat owners down there. Uh, we're getting ready to pull a permit for our, our new building. Expect to start it about the uh, first part of October sometime. Um, I'm excited about the uh, the future for for Morro Bay. I think uh, I think there's a lot of challenges ahead from the standpoint of uh, uh, funding uh, future infrastructure and so forth. I think the fishing industry has been at its nadir for some time, and I think it's it's got a good chance of coming back. Looking at the science and so forth in terms of the fish stocks and so forth. Um, I'd, I'd really like to be a part of trying to see that industry come back together again. My background is as a home builder. Uh, I built homes, uh, had a home building company and, along with a partner in, uh, in California. We also did some work in, in Oregon. Uh, so I have, I have quite, a, quite a bit of business experience and I hope I can bring some, uh, um, uh, some uh, economic experience to the uh, uh, to, to the challenges that uh, that are going on uh, uh, for the for the harbor. Thanks, Bob. All right, folks. Uh, we'll just start off at with Miss McPherson, and she'll start off with the questions, and then okay. she'll just direct on which how we go through that, and then we'll just go to the down to Mr. Davis. Okay. Um, well, I'll, we'll start the same way around, go around, and then we can change it up the next time. Um, you know, we live in a small community, and our harbor is a, a relatively small harbor, and not that many boats in it compared to other harbors um, along the coast of California. And we have a lot of um, needs, I think, in the harbor department uh, for projects and maintenance that has been um, delayed and and we just haven't had the funds. So I'm curious to know um, how you, what your thoughts are on how we could increase revenues in the Harbor Fund. Um, and anything you can add to that would be great. So we'll start with you. <laughs> That's definitely one of the key challenges is funding for all municipalities. And of course, something is... is subset is the Harbor District itself. Again, another area. The, the Harbor itself is a very unique venue. It has a lot of opportunity through tourism to raise substantial you know, fees, et cetera, through its normal course of business. But also it has venues that could incorporate 
uh, special events, etc., that could be additional revenue sources. I, I can imagine things like uh, concerts at the Rock or car shows that have particular themes, etc., that could be revenue enhancing over and above uh, the normal flows and streams. There's also the opportunity, I feel, that the, the uniqueness of the, the harbor itself, <clears throat> that uh, grants may be available through a lot of different uh, private entities. And that would be an area that I would think that would be a area of uh, pursuit, as it is a unique portion of our central coast, the only harbor with docks. And uh, as such, is a, a valuable resource to us all. As you may have noticed on the attachment to my application when I was uh, at Saddleback College uh, and developing the computer training program, I did get uh, donations of a half million dollars worth of computer equipment uh, to start our computer lab. That department, by the way, grew to be the biggest department in the college with 3,000 students. I'm pretty good about going out to industry and contacting individuals from private corporations and getting them to make donations to, uh, it's good for their tax, taxes and their public relations, and of course it would be wonderful for us. Thank you. Cherise? Okay, well, being a business owner on the Embarcadero, I know um, where some of my money goes to um, that I make, and it goes to the Harbor Fund. Um, I feel that a lot of um, things that happen with business owners um, and the and the Harbor Fund um, can be, uh, instead of opposition, it could actually work synergistically to help in aid aiding that. So any time that um, businesses, I think that we should work together, and then and if a business does really well, then that will also increase the amount that goes to the Harbor Fund. Um, there's also other events that I've um, been interested in doing, um, events that actually happen on the waterfront that could be something that stimulate um, more uh, productivity as far as those businesses down there go and um, just public enjoyment of the waterfront. And then also the new developments, um, Bob and and ourselves are, are going to be a part of that I think will increase um, uh, a lot of the, the issues that need to be generated um, when, with new developments, there comes money. Thank you. I think, uh, I think there's, a, there's a lot of great development opportunities available uh, down in the harbor area here. Um, but I think I think the the benefit that uh, Morro Bay provides is is more than just to the city of Morro Bay. It's to the entire county and to the surrounding communities. I was a leaseholder in uh, Ventura Harbor, and that's organized as a port district. And I think the Harbor Advisory Board has been looking at that as as a possibility for Morro Bay. Um, the the uh, the revenue from the leaseholds and so forth I think is, is a good thing. I'd like to see as much of it stay down in the harbor as possible and fund the needs down there. But I think the benefits go beyond just that. And uh, I'd be an advocate for, for looking at a, a regional funding source, uh, such as a harbor district or a port district. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Sure. Oh, there we go. Mr. Bliss, we'll start with you on this one. Um, Mr. Fowler, you bring up a good point, um, but however, I'll follow up on it. What do you, in terms of the larger issues facing the um, harbor, and it's not necessarily just the generation of economic um, input to the city, what are some of the bigger issues that you think face the harbor district? Well, I've got to be honest. Uh, I really have not had any connection with your harbor here in the three years that I've lived here. Uh, and so it would be very difficult for me to give you a good, clear answer to that question. Uh, it looks, as I have observed, it looks like you have boats at moorings, and I'm sure you charge a fee for that. It looks as though there are a number of professional fishing boats that operate out of the harbor, and I would assume that the city gets uh, revenue from their sales of fish. Uh, 
but to be very honest with you, I'd have to be on the committee and study it more to okay. give you, a, you a more complete answer. Okay. Sharice, we'll go around that way. Okay. I was writing so much stuff down. There's so many um, important things that that um, we need to address. I um, some of them the, the fact that we're a bird sanctuary and um, keeping um, with um, with being able to utilize the resource, the natural resource of the <coughs> harbor, and and also make it a, a beautiful area for the bird sanctuary, um, not just for seagulls, please. <laughs> I mean, we need to look at too many pigeons and too many seagulls. So there, there are issues with that. And um, I, even this morning, I read about, um, they say, 20 inches of rising water levels by uh, 2100, I believe it is, and um, and how that affects us and how we should um, prepare for it in, in the decisions that we make. There's just a couple of them. Um, and uh, the eelgrass um, issues and development um, there's there's quite a few, <laughs> um, but I want to be a part of, of all of the there's 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 a bunch and and I uh, would also want to be a part of, of making sure that we look at all the aspects of anything the decisions that we make that if it's going to have an opposite or different reaction. So I'd like to do some of that investigating and, and knowledge uh, gaining to to aid in your guys's decision making and if, if any of those issues come up to the council. Thank you. I, uh, I uh, think back to listening to Eric talk at uh, some, uh, some of the different meetings and so forth. And I'm reminded that he tells me that years ago uh, there were 275 fishing boats in uh, Morro Bay. We're down to 75 now. Like I said before, I think, I think we're at the nadir. I see the sport fishing business is getting better. We, uh, we had uh, three boats operating last year with all of the, throughout the harbor. We were up to five this year, and we have another one coming in next year. So the uh, fish stocks are up. I think if we, if we want to see the fishing industry come back, though, we've got to provide, for, provide the infrastructure for it. The Harbor Advisory uh, Board has been looking at uh, a uh, haul-out facility for some time. And uh, I think, I, I, I think the, the way to approach that might be uh, to bring some entrepreneurial spirit to it, to bring somebody in who has done that business before and perhaps make some sort of a deal with them to have an individual begin to push that project forward. We've, we've come up with an idea of where it ought to locate and maybe if we can give somebody the incentive to push a project forward, it won't be going from committee to committee, it'll actually be a, a project. Funding it is going to be difficult, but you know, that's, what, that's what leaders are for. Thank you. Well, in a sense, I feel that there's probably a need for um, a master plan for the the harbor itself, in terms of both looking at locations for this type of product, also what can be utilized land-wise for other revenue sources, either through partnership and development, or for development of different types of venues that the city can uh, exploit to bring additional people down to the Embarcadero to aid the economic impact for the residents and the business holders and all the stakeholders. Um, the fishing aspects best would take a lot of study on my part to understand those dynamics. And we have specific board members that have expertise in that that can guide us in those directions as well. So I feel that their expertise was valuable in looking at what our harbor is and what it should become in the future to serve all of the constituencies and be a self-sustaining entity, in essence. Thank you. Thanks. Red? Uh, two of our vacancies were for people who served on the um, Harbor Advisory Board Budget and Finance Committee. So I guess we'll start with Sharice on this. Um, describe the, what experience you have in the areas of finance and budgeting. Okay. Um, 
I am my own bookkeeper. Uh, I, at a very young age of 17, because they couldn't put me on the waitress staff until I was 18, became the bookkeeper for a large um, restaurant chain. I've always been um, math oriented and book smart and have done my own taxes since I was, well, 16. My dad taught me how to do that. But anyway, uh, really uh, budgeting books and, uh, or balancing books and budgeting money is uh, something that I'm, I'm really, I think that I'm really good at. Uh, also, um, because the city council requested um, a, a very thorough business plan, I'm very good at putting together a business plan now. I took a course as well as uh, paid someone and learned from them and asked about everything that they had to offer uh, me. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, I'll hand it over to Bob. Um, I had a, uh, a home building business, I think, as I mentioned before. Uh, we built from 1994 through 2008, we built about 3,000 houses in Ventura County. The basis of any business is, is financial planning. Um, during that period of time, I was also a uh, founding director of Mission Community Bank. Uh, we put that bank together. It's, it's since sold probably about four or five times now. I think it's Pacific Premier is what it's agglomerated into. Um, I also do my own bookkeeping now <laughs> for the small companies that I have. Um, I, I, I think I've got quite a bit of experience in, in budgeting and planning. Well, starting with my undergraduate degree in finance, in business finance, and then from there operating larger businesses in 150 employee ranges and being the managing director thereof, that experience has proved very well for me. And beyond that, my most recent experience for the last 10 years is I've been a contractor, signed contractor in the, in the San uh, Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County area and operating that business over the last 10 years has been both a challenge and a, uh, a joy. Uh, well, as you may have seen from my background sheet, I uh, have an MBA and I served as a vice president for a homeowners association in Orange County with 1,700 homes and a population of over 3,000 people. Uh, my annual budget was over $3 million and uh, in the first year that I was treasurer, I, uh, I wound up with a positive surplus of $250,000 at the end of the year. In my second year, I was appointed to the vice presidency of that association. I currently serve as the treasurer for a men's retirement group here in Morro Bay called RAM, Retired Active Men. Uh, I've only done that for a short time, but my very first act was to save them uh, having to pay a $12 a month maintenance fee at our bank. Uh, by changing our registration. All right, okay, thank you. Um, thanks again for everyone uh, coming out tonight. The advisory board has gone through a series of um, goal setting. The city council's gone through goal setting. We've asked for uh, input from all our advisory boards, and of course the Harvard Advisory Board was probably one of the longest lists that we received because there's a lot of things to, ta to take on, and that's a good thing, but we do have to prioritize those, and we have, we, we'll go through that. So uh, the city, there'll be a new city council coming up in January, and there'll be new goal setting uh, taking place as well. Um, I'm curious on what you've thought about as far as um, goals that might be uh, beneficial to recommend for city council moving forward. And I'll throw this one, this out as well. Uh, we, there's some questions and conversations about uh, infrastructure and planning. Uh, we have a waterfront master plan that's a little over 25 years old. And we're gonna be completing our general plan and local coastal plan this year. So it could be something that might be out in the future to uh, revisit updating our waterfront master plan. 25 years old, it's probably at that time. That's just a, 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 an idea there for you, but from your own personal perspectives, 
could you speak to something that um, comes to your mind with your experience so far on what a, a, a recommended goal would be for council to consider in the coming year? And I'll start. I'll start up front. Thanks. Taking into account that there is currently a deficit um, for the funding for the for the district or the the harbor itself, I would be looking at creating not only a master plan in terms of development, but a master plan in terms of the economics to say here's how we're going to overcome this uh, this negative portion of the the harbor district itself. How that's accomplished is going to take a lot of innovation. It's going to take some different thinking and it may in tune go into a lot of the master planning of the real estate itself. And as such, those two elements have to work together that we can develop the, the plan both economically and with regard to the the, the product that's delivered, the infrastructure, the development, and what's available to be developed. Thank you. Mr. Bliss? Um, both of my bachelor's and my master's degrees at Cal State Fullerton, uh, my major was marketing. Excuse me, my major was management, but my minor was marketing. And uh, in my teaching, I taught many courses in marketing. Uh, advertising, salesmanship, merchandising. Uh, it seems to me that what you need is a marketing plan. And I think you need to go out and contact people in the community, business owners, large corporations with funding to donate. I think that would be a, a major impact. Thank you. Cherise? Okay. I wanted to get a little clarification on on the question are you looking for how um, I'll restate it again if you want okay that Thanks. sounds good uh, it was just kind of you know I let in with um, a comment about as an example but from your experience I was just uh, interested to understand if there's a some goal setting that'll be taking place in the coming year what would from your experience, what might you recommend as a Harbor Advisory Board member uh, during that goal setting period? Um, what would you What would you recommend, along with your colleagues on the Harbor Advisory Board, for Council to consider as goals to establish for for the Harbor Advisory Board? Okay. All right. In in response to that, because I know that there's city issues, and um, that's a major a fiscal uh, monetary issue that's looming over. Um, I, the things that I was thinking about were harbor I, I, harbor issues directly, that's, that's, yeah, of yeah. which um, dredging is always uh, an issue. The fact that we need to haul out, um, uh, making um, new developments happen um, perhaps a little quicker, just because a lot of the leases are up and and the buildings are depressed. Um, uh, there's also relations that we have with the Coastal Department in having the ability to make our own decisions uh, or have things actually culminate um, with with uh, working with Coastal Department to, to get the accomplishments that we need to do with parking and, um, and other issues with the harbor. Um, as far as um, funds, I know uh, about the budget of the harbor, where, where the money goes with the harbor funds, and so um, I would like to be a part of, of possibly knowing where that money goes to. I know that there was um, some put into the general fund. Uh, so I would like to be a part of that to, to say that it should go um, to the harbor and then um, be a part of, of decision making of where if it didn't go to the harbor, where would it go? Where would the city actually need it to go? And there, there's, as you know, numerous um, possibilities. And then if the issue comes up, discuss that and be a part of that discussion. Thanks. Bob? I think the... Uh the most important thing that the uh, Harbor Advisory Board can provide to the City Council is some uh, input on long-range funding and planning. Um, I, uh, I I see that more as a, as a long-term kind of a goal, and I think there's also some sh shorter-term goals that uh, that the uh, the city could look at. I think the haul-out facility is one. I think uh, coming up with uh, 
uh, ways of replacing some aging infrastructure and so forth out there. A lot of the uh, city's docks and so forth are, are getting kind of old. Um, I think looking at uh, other kinds of revenue sources uh, out there is, is, is something else that the uh, Harbor Advisory Board can do. But I think the, one of the key, the, the key thing to me is the long range funding uh, for, the, for the harbor. Okay, thanks. Um, are there any follow-up questions from the council? No. Okay, okay so uh, at this point we can go ahead and uh, we have our sheet here. We'll just cast our vote and then turn it into you, Dana. Okay. Um, just want to say thanks again. Um, obviously we're going to pick one of the two of the pair of you, but would also like to express as we've gone through this before, we're always delighted and pleased and grateful for you all to take the time to come out for sometimes what might be kind of a clunky interview, but it's great to have you and I would encourage all of you to um, uh, apply again and we certainly appreciate you coming out tonight. And so since there's four of us, we might, you'll, Dana, you'll direct us if, if it comes to that. <laughs> okay, for the member at large position, um, council members McPherson, Makowetsky, and Davis have um, voted to appoint Mr. Blackford to fill that vacancy. Um, Mayor Irons voted for Mr. Bliss, so Mr. Blackford is appointed to fill the vacancy um, through the term ending January 31st of 2021. Um, for the waterfront leaseholder, Mayor Irons, Councilmember Makowetsky, and Councilmember Davis have voted to appoint Sharice Hansen to fill that vacancy. And Council Member McPherson voted for Mr. Fowler. So, Ms. Hansen, you've been appointed to fill that vacancy for a term ending January 31st, 2019. Thank you. Okay, thank you all very much. Thanks very much. Okay, we wanted to invite uh, Mr. Patel, if you could come on up. Please sit, sit here in front with us, join us. <laughs> You're all by yourself up there now. <laughs> I think the microphone, that, yeah, there you go, that one works. Um, so you got a little dress rehearsal on, on how it all worked. Um, but please, um, thanks again. Uh, we'll, we, um, and we have gone through the, the process to, to, to go through the interview with you, and um, we just want to say thanks. And we'll just start off with a, a brief introduction from you, and then we'll just go through some questions uh, as we did with our other um, as our sure. candidates. Thank you. Um, I've been in the hotel. I've been in the hotel business for in more. Can you speak up to the mic, please? Thanks. I've been in the hotel business in Moore Bay. Uh, since about 2001, I grew up in this business since 91, and been in it ever since. I've owned uh, multiple hotels in town and in the area, San Luis, Santa Barbara, Paso. So, been in the hotel business my whole life. Okay, all right. And uh, we'll start off with questions, and Marlos, you want to start us off? Sure. Um, let me just ask you uh, why you want to be on, on the county-wide uh, board, and, and what, what do you think you're going to contribute to it? I think it's much more of a learning experience for me also. I think contribute to my experience uh, of being in the business. More of a Is that microphone, please? Uh, I can con contribute what I've learned in the business over the years and learn from other people that's been in the business. 
and there'd be a great opportunity to try to expand myself and probably teach somebody else and learn from them. Okay, okay. Matt. Okay, that's a well, great point. Talking about yourself and what you can offer, um, bring to it. Now, how would Morro Bay, in a larger sense, given the various hotels that we have, um, how could they benefit? Um, I feel like um, these. The county tourism, they focus on the larger hotels. And what Morbay has a lot more smaller properties, and I myself have smaller properties. So I feel it's a great voice for the smaller properties who are not being, you know, they're not given the time of day. Because everything's focused more on larger properties. So being with Morbay having a lot of small properties, I think being a small property owner is a great voice for our smaller properties, which most of Morbay is. Good. Good point. Thank you. Red? You have a very nice letter of recommendation from Chuck Davison. Thank you. Can you can you tell us what your experience has been working with Chuck, the, the length of time, and the the kinds of things that you've worked with him on? I've I've worked with Chuck for maybe about a year now. Um, they haven't worked a lot because I really was never on any of the boards with him. But I've worked with Jennifer Little here in town for quite some time about promoting more Bay promoting tourism, increasing our occupancy, our business and tourism in Morbay in general. I attend all these meetings that the county has, uh, SloCal. But personally, I haven't been on the uh, county stuff, so I really haven't much uh, experience with that. May I follow up a little bit? Sure. You say you've attended a lot of the SloCal meetings. And why do you do that? Oh, because they have like small meetings. They had one here about a, a month and a half ago where they tell you about all the different stuff that they're doing for our area, all these promotions they're promoting and how to participate. Because all, in that meeting, I think like eight people showed up from Moore Bay. So it's, hopefully we can get more people involved so we have bigger meetings or how we can promote Moore Bay websites, things that the county is doing that probably hotels in Moore Bay are not take, uh, partaking on on the county-wide level of the marketing. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks again for coming out. So, um, as far as the, the term that you would be appointed to and um, uh, to your <coughs> comment about the attendance fr uh, uh, from some of the hoteliers at the meetings that you've gone to and some of the smaller properties that exist in Moore Bay versus the larger ones in the county, um, kind of a twofold question. It's our experience, at least my experience, uh, on council and for advisory boards, specifically TBID. We, it's a lot of work for you to to attend the the, the TBID meetings um, and understanding you've got a business to run and everything. So, and I think that kind of speaks to maybe why not a lot of people come to the meetings. So. That's what's so important about the one that represents um, us as a city. So can you speak a little bit about what you've experienced from um, the communication from SloCal and what you might want to contribute to communicate to all the other hoteliers that exist in Morro Bay? Because that, as far as representing, that will be one of the big roles for you um, as well. I think my, my role would be if I, I am on board and there's meetings that I think hotels can benefit from, it'd be actually going to hotels, visiting the managers or the owners, and let them know it's, it's, that they should attend and try to get them on board. Because I know most of the owners in town for almost all the hotels. Okay. So I, I can get a lot more attendance because I do know most of them. Okay, and I'll just do one follow up. Um, so you've been in it since, what, 2001 and 1990 what? I moved to Moore Bay in 91. 91? That's my parents first acquired the first property. Okay. And in 2001, we bought the Twin Dolphin Inn. And uh, in 2013, it was converted to Comfort Inn. Uh, we had also the Ascot Suites, which was purchased in 07. We sold that a couple of years ago. Um, I have another property in town, a land that we're planning on developing, a hotel in the near future. So, But I have the, I have the time to meet people because I, actually I'm... I have a lot of flexibility because I have a lot of staffing that's there working for me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any follow-up questions from council? No. Seeing none? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. We don't have any ballots back, but we can do it by a voice vote. Sorry. Uh, One more. Red. Red's ready. <laughs> Sorry, Jamie. Um, 
I'm interested. You said you have a piece of land in town and you plan to develop a hotel on it. Can you tell us anything about that? For instance, the number of rooms or that kind you of know, thing? You know, it's still in the works. We haven't, uh, it's still going through uh, like architectural planning. But it'd be, I think, close in the mid 70s. Mid 70s number of rooms? Yes. Room count? Very good. Okay, thanks. Um, we can just go ahead and do a, a roll call a vote. Motion. Okay. Uh, or we can, you want to just do a, a roll call, make a motion to appoint Mr. Patel, and then a roll, do a roll call vote? That would be would fine. that work? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just go ahead and make a motion to appoint Mr. Patel to the Visit Slocal uh, board. I second that. So motion by Mr. Irons, second by Mr. Makowetsky. You don't have a microphone. You can't second if you don't I have a microphone. I can't second if I don't have a microphone. Go ahead. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. No, I second that. All right. So we did get an official second by Mr. Makowetsky. Any further discussion? None. If we could do a roll call vote, please. Very well. Um, Mayor Irons? Yes. Councilmember Makowetsky? Yes. Councilmember Davis? Yes. And Councilmember McPherson? Yes. The motion passes 401 with council member heading absent. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Patel. Appreciate it. And congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and with that, um, we don't have any closing remarks. We can go ahead and adjourn, and we'll be back here for our 6 o'clock regular city council meeting. Thank you very much.